I said something about it. We had, we had an incident where uh, um, we had, the owner had an employee, had a few employees, they got fired, had, and they must have signed a contract where they had to stay 60 miles away from that. They couldn't work for another business 60 miles away from that business. That, that's, that, that's legal to completely do that? Well, I mean, it would depend on the circumstances. Okay. If, if that employee signed a non-compete agreement and given the reasonableness of those circumstances and what they signed, that's very plausible that it's something that they could do. It's, it's one of those things that's 60 miles too far away. It depends if in, in South Dakota, that's, there are large expanses in between towns yeah. and areas. And so I, I could see where if it's a farm, 60 miles is really nothing if you've got a 1,000 acre farm. That's not that far away. So that, that could be reasonable, but that's something that it would, a judge would look at that and make that determination. So th that actually happened like a, like a farm or like a co-op, like a country side co-op. Mm -hmm. So I was just, I was just curious because you know that really sucks for the, like the family having to get up and move. You know, if it, even if it's like a three-year, you know, agreement, you know, that would be tough, especially if your families are there. You know, so you get a lot of relatives there. And, mm -hmm. and that's that is one thing. There. Yes, it's it's one of those trade-offs like I was talking about, where that is their family, that is their livelihood, and because they signed that agreement, say three years ago. They didn't anticipate that this was going to happen, so maybe it was, this is this is the co-op that's always been here, I'm always going to work for this co-op, my dad worked for this co-op, and it's easy to be complacent, which that's why it's good to consult an attorney and make sure that it's something that you can really live with if anything bad happens. And, you know, 60 miles, in, here in Lincoln and Omaha, that doesn't seem like such a big deal because people commute back and forth all the time. It's but a huge problem, though. Um, the physicians for Legion Health is, have to sign a non-compete agreement in Omaha. So if they transfer here into Lincoln, they have to try to fight that agreement and say that, no, no, these are different markets, the Legion's not here, you know, this doesn't apply. And you can usually win that battle because it's different cities, but technically they're still subject to it. And so it is an interesting dynamic here between Lincoln and Omaha where you do get caught up between the two cities. And it's, it's all relative to where you are and what industry in a co-op, that's something very different because you know, if they're not relying on farmer A and B that are within one mile. They collect grain from everywhere, most often. And so that may be reasonable to expect a farmer to travel 60 miles. Like, you're, are you, you're from a farming community. Yeah, yeah. Would, if you had no other option but to take your grain 60 miles to the co-op, you would most likely have to do that if that's the only way to sell your grain and that's the only place that you can go. And by having that restriction, it may be just on the edge of reasonableness, but it helps their business sustain itself and makes it more difficult for others to enter the market. It's, that's that's why you want to have a non-compete. Good question. Very good. The stories are what help, okay? And entrepreneurs like to make a game out of everything. So, you're going to make a game out of this. I'm going to tell a story and you're going to flip back in your presentation to what you were talking about at that time, because this is a whole lot of information to be processing through. But if I tell a story about a business, then you can flip back to what was happening in that business where an attorney needed to be there, okay? And that way, I think you'll be able to apply a lot of this and see real life what's happening. So this is a real life story, okay? Student in college has an internship and you said a lot of times you hire interns in order to um, help keep your costs down but also bring new life into the business. So decides in college that they want to become an opt optometrist, okay? So there's more school to go through, longer internship in order to get through <coughs> Uh, school, but ends up going to work for a partnership uh, where there's a opto couple of optometrists that have gotten together and set up a practice. Okay, When they bring him on, he wants to be, become a partner with the company. So if you flip back through your little presentation when you were talking about um, all right, now he went from an internship where he was just learning from one company, learned the skills that he needed, goes to work and is hired after he graduates, 
with some partners, they are hardly ever there, okay, because they have other practices in other places. So new business starting up, he comes in, he's thinking, I'm going to become a partner, I'm putting everything I have into this company, okay? So he networks, he gets a whole bunch of clients going, he builds this business within a year, and huge compared to what it was when he came on. But to him, this is my business. I'm here most of the time. These other guys are hardly ever here. But I want that business to grow because I'm going to become a partner. And he even finds out that the name has not been um, uh, copied or what you, uh, trademarked. trademarked. And so he goes ahead and does that so that nobody else will come in and steal the name of this practice. So then, obviously, the financials are looking wonderful for this company that had been open a couple of years before he ever came on. And he was good friends with these uh, partners because they helped him get through college and gave him lots of advice on, on getting there. So now he has trademarked the name, and he went ahead and did that because they, they said, oh, fine, don't worry about that, you know, we'll... They weren't very legally <laughs> connected to what they needed to do. But then, when two years he's been working with this company, building it up, and he says, okay, I, I want to become a partner now. And they said, well, you know, we don't want to really do it that way. We want to just continue paying you to run this company, but we don't want to set up partnerships. Why would they do that? Well, they're, they're probably giving a very good profit center off of this person who's working very diligently to build this practice. But they don't, this partner who's not a partner because he doesn't have any stake in the company, he's not given anything on paper. I'm sure that he's probably given time and money and he's grown this, his, his network, but he hasn't officially become a partner. He hasn't gotten a stake in the company. So he's working very hard and it, all he is doing is growing the profit center for those two people who are partners. And it's, it's very alluring to keep that percentage, that say 25%, 33% that that person probably deserves and keep it for themselves. That's a lot more money, that's a lot more equity and it's, it's easy to fall into that trap. Did you, do you have any comments on that? Uh, it wasn't promised anything and there's nothing in writing that says he was promised to stay. He's been an employee and has been working as a very good employee. Mm -hmm. um, that's and unfortunately all he has. Yeah. And so, again, all of a sudden, though, the partners wake up, or these people wake up and say, well, we would like you to sign a non-compete form so that, you know, you can stay working with us, but to stay working with us, we want you to sign this form. So, obviously, they went and talked to some attorneys. <laughs> and uh, luckily, this young man was smart enough not to do that. Because if he would have done that, then that keeps him from, and you had a slide about that, uh, keeping him from opening up another practice someplace else. So he didn't sign. So time is going by. He's thinking, you know, I could do this just as well as they do. I already have built up relationships with all of these patients that are coming in. So why should I continue working for these guys, giving them my sweat, my tears, my <laughs> everything, and just be on a salary? So he opens up his own business in the same community, doesn't take the records, because what would have happened if he would have taken those records? Most likely that's confidential information and that's part of that data mining. It, it is a theft and that's, they don't like that. That's kind of frowned upon. <laughs> uh, but, you know, at the same time, a non-solicitation agreement like we talked about, that just prohibits, if he had signed that, that would have just prohibited him from going after those clients saying, hey, I'm leaving, uh, just wanted to let you know. That doesn't stop me as an individual from deciding that I like a doctor and I'm transferring my records to a doctor. That doesn't mean that you're never going to get a client again. And it, 
not signing a non-compete agreement and or non-disclosure and non-solicitation up front is a double-edged sword. For the company, that means that down the road if something were to happen, you're kind of stuck. Uh, one of the things actually that we didn't mention is that there needs to be consideration when you have an agreement. Basically, I have to get something in return for what you're getting. So that's why a lot of times when they do non-compete agreements, they do those up front because you're getting a job and in return, I'm getting this non-compete, I'm getting this non-disclosure. Uh, on the back end, it's a lot more difficult. So here, it, if it's you need to sign this in order to have continued employment, that could be a fuzzy line. Are you really giving something for that agreement? Because you have to have consideration to make an agreement work. And if both parties aren't getting something in return, that's a voidable agreement. So it, it puts the doctor in a very good position because I don't have to sign it. And if, if who's going to buffalo a little bit better? Are you really going to fire me when I build up your business and I don't have a non-compete agreement and these clients just come with me if they decide that they want to come with me? It's, that's very precarious, and on the business end, they should have been more prepared, and they should have realized this could be a problem. On the front end, this particular doctor should have had in writing, say, a vesting agreement, or something in writing said, the intent of this is to make me a partner in the future, which doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually going to be a partner. Intentions can change all the time. But you need something in writing to show what the course is going to be for this agreement, and things change all the time. Uh, but he, he, they, on both ends, they should have considered this a lot more. And it's easy to fall into a trap with friends because you don't think that this is going to happen with your friends and family. And it's sometimes a business is the most destructive thing that can happen to your relationship, which is why, personally, I'm very cautious. I don't like to do business with friends and family because I value my relationships too much. But at the same time, I think that you should be able to have an open conversation with these people if you're at the point where you want to add them to your business and say, listen, let's do this. I think we have complementing competencies, but let's make sure that we keep our relationship together and we keep it whole. Let's talk about these hard issues now. And if you can't come to an agreement before you sign the paper, you're, it's not going to work. It's most likely not going to work. So think, think about these things because you don't want to end up in a situation like that. And I personally, I've seen it. I've seen my boss walk up to a fellow employee and say, I want you to sign a non-compete agreement. And this gentleman had been there for six months. I said, no, because this is my livelihood. And it was, you can't practice in the Lincoln market or the Omaha market or Grand Island. Well, the guy was from Grand Island. Our job was, or his particular line of the job, was working in Lincoln and Omaha. And the only thing he knew was his particular line of business. What are you going to do? How are you going to feed yourself? How do you, and it was a very discreet market. There were only three or four companies in town that do this at, at the very most, and even probably in the Omaha area. So it's, it was a very difficult, and he decided, no, I'm not going to sign it. And they just said, I'm not going to, and you need me. You're not going to fire me because you have no one else who can do what I do. And a year later, he ended up leaving and starting his own business, and he is now in competition with my former employer. It's, it's the risk that you take. He should have done that up front. And, you know, where do you go from there? You guys are just the prime candidates for this. You have to realize that because as we send you out to corporate America to get your experience or as you go to work for people, um, again, if you have that entrepreneurial spirit, it's I want to help this company. I want to help build it. Otherwise, you won't feel very satisfied with your job unless you're one of those that's just going into work nine to five and make your money and so that you can go someplace else. But the point is, is that you can get yourself into quite a situation <clears throat> where you're having to hire an attorney to protect yourself. And if you know some of this going into it, you'll be a little more cautious about what you're doing uh, for the company and Again, at least now you know about some of these forms and things that they'll ask you to sign and it is a scary situation when you know that you could do whatever this company is doing better than them so I'm going to go out and start my own business but then you find out about things that end up stopping you in your tracks and all of a sudden like I said it's your bread and butter and you can't do it so then you have to go out and find something else 